name is Alexander Nakhabov. Today I'd like to present for you a presentation about safety of nuclear power plants of Russian design. I am associate professor of Institute of Nuclear Physics and Power Engineering of National Research Nuclear University MFE, Russia. And of course, first of all, I'd like to give you some brief uh, presentation about my university. So, MIFI is one of the best universities in the world, if you say about nuclear education, and one of the leading universities in the Russian Federation. Not only if we say about nuclear area, but as well as about laser, plasma and beam technologies, microwave nanoelectronics, biomedicine and medical physics, and uh, information technology as well. About structure of this university. Uh, first of all, there are two mine campuses in Moscow itself and in Obninsk, 100 kilometers away from Moscow. Moscow campus is the biggest one, uh, about, one uh, about 10,000 of students inside, with a lot of different institution, institutions around, and my institution is Institute of Nuclear Physics and Engineering. In Obninsk, uh, we have actually the same uh, institutions, but uh, not so many students. Uh, nowadays in Obnis campus there are about 2,500 students. And uh, one year ago the first campus of MIFI University was launched in a uh, foreign country, in Uzbekistan, to train personnel for future nuclear power plant of Russian design. MIFI is one of the leading universities in the Russian Federation, if you say about education, not only Russian citizens, but uh, people from different countries around of the world. And on this map you can see uh, different countries in uh, purple, uh, countries of uh, our students. Actually, uh, a lot of countries all around the world. And first of all, we, we say about training personnel for countries of former Un Soviet Union, like Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, Armenia, and so on. And uh, if, when we say about countries abroad of Russian Federation, we should to say about training personnel, future personnel, for nuclear power plants, like uh, Egypt, Turkey, and uh, uh, Bangladesh nowadays. And countries, uh, when we say about training personnel for uh, nuclear infrastructure or for nuclear center for science and technology, like Rwanda, Bolivia, Vietnam. And on this slide you can see some, diff some uh, numbers about foreign students in our university and uh, some progress, some dynamics for years, if we say about number of foreign uh, students in Nuclear University MFE. About educational programs in our university. First of all, we can divide these programs as usual in undergraduate and graduate programs. In the Russian system, uh, except of bachelor as usual, four years of education, we can say about so-called specialist level uh, education, 5.5 years, but as usual nowadays uh, for foreign students only bachelor programs uh, proposed. And um, all, all bachelor programs can be divided in two big groups. One group uh, more, uh, more connected with science, like radio ecology, for example, like nuclear physics and cosmophysics, experimental research, and so on. And the second area is about operation operation of nuclear power plants and nuclear objects, like operation of nuclear power plants, maintenance, repair and installation of nuclear power plant equipment, nuclear technologies, and so on. You can see all this program listed on this slide. Of course, uh, on the next slide I will comment only programs uh, for nuclear area from my institution. Graduate programs, as usual, master programs, uh, it should be two years of education, if we say about education in English. If you say about education in Russian language, uh, you should add one more year of preparatory faculty to train Russian language before. And 
Actually, the main idea is the same, like for undergraduate programs, uh, for scientific area and for operational area. All our foreign students uh, live into campuses in Moscow or in Obninsk, uh, very comfortable ones, uh, separate buildings, uh, fully equipped with uh, special facilities for students. All students in Obnis, for example, live into special um, rooms for two or three people in, in uh, every room. And, uh, of course, all the students uh, have special infrastructure, infrastructure for living in our cities. Of course, I'd like to mention summer schools. Not in this year, I, I fear, but in general we have several summer schools, as usual in English, for foreign students from different universities to visit Russia, to visit our university and to spend approximately one or two weeks in Russia uh, to get familiarized with our education. And about admission process, you, you will find uh, some information on this slide, but in general our admission office can answer on all your questions about admission in our university. But now I'd like to return to our main topic about safety of nuclear power plants of Russian design. And first of all, I'd like to say about five uh, main sources of energy nowadays in the world. First of all, it's thermal power plant, when, uh, when chemical energy of fuel should be used. First of all, of coal, oil or gas. Hydroelectric power station, wind power engineering, solar power engineering and nuclear power plants. Uh, actually, from these uh, five sources of energy, hydro, wind, solar and nuclear nowadays, as usual, are considered like uh, so-called green square, green square of clean energy producers. And if you will say about fuel shares in the total electricity production, nowadays, of course, top three is coal, gas and hydro, respectively. Nuclear goes to fourth place with approximately 10-11% in total shares of electricity. And when we say about nuclear, I hope you know about nuclear is uh, very broadly used in the world. On this map you will see all nuclear country. Nuclear means country uses nuclear for, to produce electricity, first of all, not for research. To produce electricity and color used to uh, divide all countries in different groups if we say about share, share of nuclear generation in total share of electricity production in this country. And you can see, for example, uh, the top four is France, number one is the world, with more than 70% of nuclear electricity, Ukraine, Slovakia and Hungary. Very big country like Russian Federation, United States and China, with a lot of uh, power unit, nuclear power unit. Uh, on this map uh, is uh, in pictured in green or blue, it means we say about not so big percentage, not so big share of nuclear, in Russia, for example, 18 percent. United States, uh, on this slide, uh, around 20 percent of all electricity production. But you should to keep in your mind that uh, total electricity production in big countries is huge and 20 percent from all power generation in the United States, it will be very big number of uh, megawatts. And nowadays, in the world, there are more than 400 power units in operation with uh, more than uh, uh, 57 units under construction. Uh, now I'd like to briefly explain principle of operation for nuclear power plant. But I'd like to start from thermal power plant. And uh, we can uh, consider this process from the end, from the uh, consumer of electricity. So. We have transmission lines and transformer to transfer electricity in these lines, first of all. And as usual, we can use electric generator to actually generate electricity. Only one question how to rotate 
with generator. There are different possible options. We can use water, like hydro actually. Water, gas, steam and so on. In thermal power plant, as usual, if we say about coal, for example, we can use steam. Steam, uh, it means we can use uh, steam turbine connected with a turbo generator on one shaft. And if turbine will rotate, turbo generator will rotate too. And in this way we can produce electricity. Okay, we can ask uh, themselves about a uh, source of steam. We should to produce steam to rotate turbine. So, uh, idea of thermal power plant is as follows. We have special boiler or furnace with a lot of coil uh, provided in, inside of this boiler and we have usual chemical reaction. Usual, chem usual chemical reaction of burning. Burning of this coal inside of boiler. And we can take some water from river, river nearby and uh, this water goes to of course we should organize actually two circuits primary and secondary ones and of course we can take uh, water from the river uh, to make special chemical treatment of this water and this water can be used in this primary circuit so so called cold water goes inside of this boiler go through special tubes inside of boiler and of course during this process this water uh, transfer uh, the condition in steam. Uh, water gets hot. And actually on the output we have not water but steam. The steam goes to steam turbine and rotates this turbine to rotate generator as well. And after this process this steam should be condensed, condensed in, into water again just to use this water again in this process, in this cycle. And to facilitate and to improve this process of condensation we should use special condenser very big equipment a steam of uh, primary circuit goes through this condenser and this condenser actually is cooled by water from the river ocean, ocean maybe sea nearby of nuclear or thermal power plant so this cool water from the outside pumped through this condenser and the steam will be condensed into water and this water will taken up uh, again inside of this cycle again and again so water goes through boiler uh, transfer into steam condensed and again in many many cycles so this simple idea of thermal power plant so we can use in this way coal as I said previously uh, oil is a rare option and gas if you say about gas we can use gas turbine for example okay so when we say about nuclear, first of all we should uh, briefly explain nuclear fission and chain reaction. Idea is simple, in, if we say basically of course. So, some elements, some uh, chemical elements in the world uh, have spe some specific. Specific means uh, kind of interaction with neutrons. So, for example for uranium. Uranium is uh, one of the uh, elements in periodic law, periodic table. So. In some conditions, for example, uranium-5, isotope of uranium, uranium-235, for example, neutron will strike in, into this nucleus. And with some probability, uh, chain, chain reaction, not chain uh, fission reaction will realize. What does it mean? This nucleus will absorb this neutron, and this neutron will be extra. Will be extra with one more neutron, uh, this nucleus uh, get unstable and finally will split into two unstable nucleus. And actually we will see fission process of dividing of uranium nucleus into two byproducts and several neutrons after this reaction. This process is a probabilistic one as, as well and in majority of situations we will see krypton and barium as fission products. And Several neutrons means uh, probabilistic number of neutrons from uh, 1 up to 9 actually. But in the, as average we can say about 2.5 neutrons after this, after this reaction. And if we say about energy in this reaction, energy release of course not this, uh, like on this picture, like not this flash, 
but actually it's kinetic energy. First of all, uh, energy released in this reaction is kinetic energy of byproducts of this nucleus. Because this nucleus will fly with uh, huge speed in different directions and of course very quickly these uh, byproducts will be slowed down in uh, uh, some uh, crystallic grid of material for example and of course this kinetic energy finally will transform into thermal energy of some, of some kind and so on. And, and this energy is huge. By the way, this energy is very big if you say about one reaction and moreover if you say about chain of these reactions. And if neutrons after this reaction uh, will strike into other nucleus of uranium-5, for example, we can provide some high concentration of uranium inside of some material. In this situation, with high probability, uh, these neutrons will uh, trigger next reactions, next fission reaction inside of this material. In such a way, we can organize chain reaction of fission nuclear uh, uranium and we can produce a huge amount of, nu uh, of nuclear energy in this way. So, if we want to uh, construct not thermal power plant but uh, nuclear power plant instead. From the end, from the consumer of electricity, actually it's the same picture. Generator, transmission lines, turbine, as usual it's steam turbine, condenser, uh, outside source of uh, water to cool condenser with pumps, all actually all the same as thermal power plant, maybe except of parameters, pressure, flow rates and temperatures. But the main difference of course inside of uh, so-called primary circuit. In thermal power plant we use uh, boiler. Boiler and coil just to burn inside of this boiler. In nuclear power plant we can use nuclear fuel. Nuclear fuel, uranium as usual, dioxide uranium, uh, fabricated in special uranium fuel rods. And basically we can initialize fission reaction inside of this uh, so-called core, nuclear core or active zone. This fuel uh, gets hot of course and we can use different coolants. As usual in so-called pressurized water reactor, PWR type, we use uh, water, usual water. This water will, goes, will go inside of a reactor vessel from one nozzle, uh, go through this hot nuclear fuel and of course this uh, thermal energy will, trans will transfer from fuel to water. And water get hot, hot and uh, go outside from the reactor vessel from other nozzle. And we, we have in this circuit cold, uh, uh, cold water so called and hot water. And this hot water of primary circuit just transfer the thermal energy to uh, water of secondary circuit in special equipment called steam generator. Pressure in, inside of primary socket is very high because we want to, uh, to have this water in liquid state uh, uh, at the high temperature. High temperature approximately 300 degrees of Celsius. So we want to have water as liquid, so we should to provide high, uh, high pressure inside of primary socket, approximately 16 megapascals or 116 atmospheres. But water of secondary circuit at approximately 220 degrees in the inlet of steam generator. But pressure is not so high, approximately 7, 6 or 7 megapascals. Of course, water of a secondary circuit after contact with hot tubes with water of primary circuit just vaporized and we have steam. As usual, steam uh, in thermal power plant we had steam after boiler, now we have steam after steam generator. And the steam goes inside of turbine and rotates generator. So, uh, idea in this, replace, in this replace of boiler with some equipment uh, by reactor vessel with nuclear fuel and so on. Uh, first nuclear electricity was produced in the United States on EBR-1 EBR reactor. 
1951, but it was uh, enough only to supply for uh, light bulb, actually. Light bulbs only of 800 watts of electricity. The first in the world nuclear power plant connected to the grid, it was uh, Obninsk nuclear power plant in Soviet Union of 5 mega, mega, megawatts of electri electrical power in 1954. And three years after this action, uh, the first PWR, first pressurized water reactor, was put into operation in the United States. It was the first uh, nuclear reactor, nuclear power plant in the United States as well, with uh, 60 megawatts of electricity. After seven years in Soviet Union in 1964, it was the first VVR reactor. Actually, VVR is a Russian version of PWR technology. PWR is uh, actually the most prominent reactor technology in the world. Uh, more than, I guess, I guess 70 percent of all reactors of this type. So VVR is Russian version of this technology. And in Russian, VVR is abbreviation which stands for uh, reactor, power reactor with water as coolant and water as moderator. And first uh, uh, Soviet VVR was put into operation in Novovoronezh nuclear power plant. And by the way, numbers in all designations of VVR reactors stands for power output, electrical power output. In this case, it was 210 megawatts of electricity. It's uh, worth to mention that when all principal technological solutions used in VVR of first generation became traditional for all generations of VVR in the Soviet Union and Russian Federation. Then, I'd like to say about the second VVR uh, was put into operation not in Soviet Union but abroad in East Germany in the Reisberg nuclear power plant and in this way, VVR technology from the BIOF was technology not only for domestic use, but for export use in different countries. And on this slide you will see the next units of different power, VVR 365. And finally, in 1971, first VVR 440 was put into operation and it was the first series, series of VVR reactors. And for many years, more than uh, uh, 30 years, uh, 35 reactors of this type were put into operations in nine countries, Soviet Union and abroad. Maybe the most prominent uh, series of VVR, it was VVR 1000. On this slide you can see the first one, VVR 1000, in Novoronish NPP as well. By the way, Novoronish nuclear power plant is a unique nuclear power plant in Soviet Union because all first, uh, all first reactors VVR of different generations were put into operations in, nu in this nuclear power plant. So we have uh, 1000 first power unit was put into operation in 1980 and the latest one was put into operation only two years ago in February of 2018, unit 4 of Rostov nuclear power plant. On this slide you, see, you can see a lot of VVR reactors put into operations in so in Russian Federation and abroad. In uh, years before uh, millennium and after 2000. And uh, finally the latest and advanced technology of VVR is VVR 1200 megawatts. It's the first uh, power nuclear power plant of generation 3 plus. So in 2016 the first in the world power unit of generation 3 plus was put into operation in the Voronezh nuclear power plant as well, uh, unit 6, nuclear power unit 6. And uh, since this time uh, nowadays we have two more power units of this generation. In Leningrad nuclear power plant, Leningrad 2, because Leningrad 1 uh, is nuclear power plant with RBMK reactors. And only actually half a year ago, uh, unit number 7 of Novoronezh nuclear power plant was put into operation. And nowadays, uh, second power unit of Leningrad nuclear power plant is under construction. So, if we say about safety, 
about safety. First of all, we should to say about integrated safety support. Integrated safety support uh, can be divided in three big areas. About management principles, about multi-level safety principles and engineering concepts. Management, of course, first of all, we should to say about safety culture. All people on nuclear power plant should uh, keep in their mind safety is the first in priority, first of all. Responsibility of the operator. Operator means company who operates nuclear power plant in some country, for example. And of course, in every country, regulatory control and independent inspection should be organized as well, from IAEA or from government of this country. Uh, then I will say about multi-level safety principles and about physical protective barriers. On this slide I'd like to briefly mention about accident prevention and accident mitigation. Uh, it's a novel concept, not novel but actually advanced now this concept about we should not only prevent possible accident on nuclear power plant, uh, in this way we should to um, pre-calculate all possible variants of situations. But in case of possible accident, we should to uh, provide some measures to control this process, to control and monitor in uh, some specific way. It's called accident mitigation. And about engineering concepts, you can see a list of practices, quality assurance, actually as usual. So, about protective barriers. Uh, there are four protective barriers on the nuclear power plants. And in this sense, we say about uh, some barriers to protect, finally, environment from radiative materials inside of nuclear power plant, nuclear reactor, and finally inside of fuel. So, first barrier is fuel matrix. Uh, nuclear fuel is not so simple, if you say about manufacturing process. And fuel matrix is special material from the point of view of material science actually like maybe in some sense like ceramic because this fuel matrix should be designed in such a way to uh, maximally protect uh, all pro uh, radiation by product inside of this fuel matrix then this fuel matrix this fuel pellets will be organized inside of fuel rod and uh, like stack actually one by one and this fuel rod uh, has some cladding and this fuel rod is hermetically sealed on the top and the bottom. So, this cladding actually is a second barrier to protect environment from radiative materials. The next one is primary circuit, reactor vessel, steam generators, uh, pressurizer and main circulation pumps. And of course pipelines between all this equipment. Because primary circuit of course should be leak tight too and it's a uh, third barrier. And finally, after all these barriers, we should to say about containment. Containment, we can say about reactor building. It's not usual building, of course. It's specifically designed and constructed building uh, to constrain uh, all possible radioactive materials inside of this containment and to protect the environment from uh, some inside threats and as well as to protect all equipment and fuel from outside, from outside efforts. So, if you say about nuclear fuel, uh, nuclear fuel, uh, it, as usual, it's uh, uranium dioxide of different enrichment, and finally it looks like fuel pellets. You can see on the slide, very small, with, uh, in Russian design, with a central hole, specially drilled, so, it's actually fuel matrix. And I'd like to mention about uh, fresh nuclear fuel. Uh, it's not radioactive in the usual sense. Uh, it's not dangerous for personal, for usual use. And then, these fuel pellets just stacked in one very long cylinder. And this cylinder will, uh, will put into a special zirconium cladding, zirconium uh, cylinders and will sealed with both ends, its fuel rods. Uh, finally, theoretically we can use fuel rods inside of reactor separately. So, we can load, for example, separate fuel rods inside of reactor core and, for example, then uh, uh, reload or uh, make some uh, 
uh, changing in uh, uh, core as, as well. But it's uh, not so um, useful in practice. So, as usual, we use not separated fuel rods but fuel assemblies. On this slide you can see separate fuel assembly. Fuel assembly consists of uh, more than 300 fuel rods. With no cladding, all fuel uh, rods just positioned in this structure with uh, hexagonal form and uh, there are special spacer grids just to contain all together and nozzles, top and bottom nozzles to provide some fix, uh, fixage of this fuel assembly inside of core. And if, when we say about contour rods, on this part of slide you will see actually layout of fuel assembly and in red it's uh, uh, in red and green uh, it's uh, control rods inside of fuel assembly and uh, special sensors to provide uh, control and monitoring inside of core. So all these fuel assemblies in the VR reactor it more than 160 fuel assemblies and 121 control rods all these fuel assemblies just positioned inside of core of reactor. Uh, color of, on this layout stands for different enrichment of fuel. And finally reactor installation. As I said previously, reactor, circulation pumps, steam generators and one pressurizer for wall installation. Uh, main part of this reactor installation, if we say about primary circuit, uh, have very thick walls. To, uh, to provide high pressure inside. So in this way, this uh, primary socket is uh, leak tight construction, and uh, in this reason we can say about third protective barriers for possible release of nuclear materials, radiation materials inside of the environment. Uh, additionally, I'd like to mention about hydroaccumulators of emergency core cooling systems system uh, depicted on this picture. So. A Russian type, VVR Russian type, is loop type reactor cooling system with four loops. Loop, uh, one loop consists of uh, main circulation pump and one steam generator. And this loop is connected with reactor vessel. A reactor nozzles located at two heights, uh, lower and upper one. Lower for cold water, cold, uh, not really cold in uh, as its home, uh, cold means approximately 280 degrees of Celsius. Hot, uh, 30 degrees hotter to 310. So, and no holes in, uh, in reactor vessel below the inlet nozzle. It, mean, uh, it means uh, we try to minimize possibility for water to escape from reactor vessel in some accident. In Russian uh, products, uh, horizontal steam generators are used traditionally and when we say about referentiality of Russian technology, uh, we say about more than 1,500 years of reactor operation. It means not for one reactor, of course, but for all reactors of VVR type in the world, uh, totally it uh, approximates this number of reactor experience. On this slide you can see evolution of VVR safety systems during the years, and my idea uh, VVR, if we say about uh, advanced type VVR 1200, now this is uh, proposed for foreign countries, uh, we can say about all uh, perfect solutions in safety systems uh, is taken from previous projects of VVR. VVR 1000, VVR 440 and so on. But, of course, with some uh, new systems. You see in green new systems added on this uh, for every generation of VVR technology. In VVR 1200, after, especially after Fukushima disaster, uh, we say about active and passive safety systems. Active system means uh, we need some uh, external source of power supply for operation of this system in proper way. If we say about passive safety systems, there are no need to use such a type of power supply. So, if we say about, for example, totally blackout situation on the reactor nuclear power plant site with uh, no electricity, 
all these safety systems, passive safety systems, should work as usual without any power supply. So, it's uh, first of all, it's uh, primary, so primary socket as system, molten core catcher. I'd like to explain on the next slide. Special hydroaccumulator system with uh, several tanks of very big capacity of water. Water with uh, added boron inside and in case of accident all this uh, water should be uh, transferred inside of reactor vessel just to provide adequate cooling of reactor of core and to uh, provide shutdown for due to boron inside and the next system special uh, passive system of uh, uh, heat removal from the reactor core through the steam generators and finally two special heat exchangers of a passive residual heat removal system with uh, heat exchangers uh, located into a special place between inner and outer containment VVR 1200 is the first VVI type reactor with uh, two walls containment with some gap annulus between uh, inner and outer containment and this heat exchanger can, works, uh, can work without any power supply just using physical loads to cool uh, water from the steam generator uh, and to transfer this heat to the atmospheric air and in the upper part of this containment a very special filter block, block just to filter all uh, air to, uh, to prevent from some aerosols or particles inside. Molten core catcher is a special device uh, designed to const constrain possible melting of core. In case of very severe accident with melting of uh, nuclear fuel inside of reactor vessel, it's uh, possible with very low probability but possible situation of melting of this corium so-called through the reactor vessel wall into the building. And just to protect our system from this uh, kind of situation, a uh, special molten core catcher can be used. This catcher is uh, located beneath of reactor vessel and in case of this uh, accident all hot fuel corium uh, just will be uh, uh, collected by this catcher in special way and all this thermal energy will be absorbed uh, with no harm for uh, building constructions for concrete and so on. As I said previously this containment is designed not only to protect all equipment uh, not equipment but environment from uh, some inner factors and from accident from part of equipment but as well this containment is designed to protect uh, very sensitive and very important equipment inside of reactor from some external factors uh, this, all these factors can be divided in natural ones and in artificial about natural of course all VVR containment uh, containments are designed for very broad range of temperatures from very severe colds and up to very hot because uh, on the next slide you will see nowadays VVR reactors work into very different countries all around the world in very different climates so about snow load it's very sensitive for Russian for some northern countries like Finland for example but of course it's not the problem for majority of countries in Africa and Asia and tornado hurricanes very uh, prominent uh, natural phenomena in Asia first of all if you say about regions of VVR reactors it's Asia and artificial factors aircraft crash as usual in any situation we say about military aircraft like uh, uh, destroyer aircraft destroyer or in some situations this containment can be designed to protect from uh, commercial aircraft airplane the next earthquake uh, all containments uh, are designed to protect from earthquake with magnitude 8 in this scale and external explosions 
now we say about first of all terroristic attack possible and on the third and latest part of my presentation I'd like to say about uh, experience real experience uh, to uh, this been said for us about these measures is uh, enough and appropriate for real situations because uh, majority of safety systems of VVR technology uh, really was proved in uh, real situations in Russian Federation, Soviet Union and abroad for many many years of uh, uh, working experience. So first of all of course not all power plants, not all power units abroad of VVR type but only some specific ones. Armenian nuclear power plant, two VVR 440 power units. This power plant is located in Ar Armenia near uh, Caucasus mountains and uh, this nuclear power plant was, uh, successfully survived through real earthquake of magnitude 8 in 1988. Uh, two cities was fully, were fully destroyed in this earthquake but power units uh, were safely shut down and then put into operation again after several years. Zaporozhye nuclear power plant in Ukraine nowadays is the biggest nuclear power plant in Europe with six VVR 1000 power units. Temelin is the biggest power supplier in Czech Republic with VVR 1000 and VVR 440 nuclear power reactors inside of this power plant. Lavisa nuclear power plant in Finland is uh, very famous for reliable operation during 40 years and this project is um, very interesting from the start because it's Russian Soviet VVR technology uh, combined with uh, Siemens uh, instrumentation and control system first of all and moreover this uh, nuclear power plant uh, is located in on the north and uh, worked very uh, safe during many years in this uh, severe climate of Finland. Then Paks nuclear power plant is located in Hungary and nowadays it's one of the main supplier of electricity in this republic. After nuclear renaissance after 2000 years year, uh, we can say about first uh, first wave of VVR in this time it's China, India and Iran with Kodonkulam nuclear power plant, Tianwan and Boucher. Nowadays in Tianwan it's uh, uh, four power units of VVR 1000 in operation. Kodonkulam it's uh, three power units of VVR 1000 and one more under construction. And Boucher it's uh, one power unit in operation and one more under construction nowadays. And new generation is VVR 1200 under construction because nowadays uh, reactor of this type in operation uh, present only in Russian Federation in the Voronezh and Leningrad nuclear power plant nuclear power plants. But uh, in near future we will see new power units of this type abroad. First of all, Belarusian Belarusian nuclear power plant two power units. Uh, first power unit of VVR in this power plant. I think will put into operation in this year, up to the, maybe in this autumn. Rupur nuclear power plant in Bangladesh, two power units. Uh, nowadays, uh, there are concrete and mountain works, realize. And Akuyu nuclear power plant in Turkey, four power units. First concrete uh, was cast in on April 3 of 2018. And uh, nowadays in Egypt. Huge works just uh, started uh, to construct a nuclear power plant El Daba with four power units of VVR 1200 megawatts. And on this slide you can see Rosatom uh, references, global VVR fleet nowadays. Uh, some power units are shut in shutdown state nowadays after many years of operation. Uh, some units are operational and some units in green under construction. So on this slide you can see the distribution of these power units in different regions of the world, in different countries, different climates and so on. So all solutions, safety solutions uh, for VVR type reactors uh, after 
good calculations, good uh, projection work was proved by real operation of VVR reactors all the world for many many years. And nowadays we say about VVR 1200 as uh, advanced technology, reactor technology and very safe technology. So, uh, now, now I can uh, finalize our presentation. Uh, on this slide you, can, you will find my contacts. So, thank you very much for your attention. Goodbye.